The following is a presentation of TFNN. Let's go to our uh, first call of the day. We'll talk to John in Austin, Texas. How are you doing today, John? Way too good, Ken. Appreciate what you're doing. You do such a great job. This show is fantastic every day. Uh, you're a good man, John. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, friends. Happy Hump Day. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve uh, with you. 877-927-6648. That's the number to use if you want to give me a call. Talk about this market that once again is higher today. Uh, press conference with Ben Bernanke. Tedious as uh, usual, but going on uh, right now. Not much... Um, change in the uh, Fed policy statement uh, information since the Fed's last meeting, according to the Fed, suggests a return to moderate economic growth following a pause late last year. Central Bank does continue to see downside risks to the economic outlook. As a result, it's sticking to its quantitative easing program, buying $40 billion a month of mortgage-backed securities and $45 billion of treasuries. So uh, market has uh, trading near highs, has decided to, to rally on that. But uh, first of all, let me just uh, remind you that a uh, great way to listen to the show is on your uh, smartphone. All you have to do is uh, open up your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi. Great way to listen to Breakout Investing and all other shows on TFNN. So just open that smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. And if you want to look at charts live right along with me on the program, you can use Tiger TV to do that on the homepage of tfnn.com. The show is carried live on Channel 1. It is archived on Channel 13. And Tiger TV is also viewable on your handheld uh, device. All you have to do is once again open that smartphone browser and type in tfnn.com. Over on the top right hand side of the home page, you'll see a box with some um, electronic devices in there. Click that box and Tiger TV will start streaming on your uh, cell phone. If you missed uh, the show yesterday, I announced at the top of the show that um, I have decided to uh, discontinue my newsletter at uh, tfnn.com, Ultimate Growth Stocks. My last issue will be Tuesday, March 26th, and my last radio show on TFNN will be Thursday, March 28th. I have uh, decided to uh, accept an offer to go back to uh, Investors Business Daily, effective uh, April 1st. It was not an easy decision at all to uh, end the newsletter and end my show at uh, TFNN.com. I've had uh, great support from the uh, TFNN uh, family, but it is the uh, right decision at the uh, right time for me. So I appreciate all the phone calls uh, to the program, all uh, the great uh, subscribers and all the support that I've had in recent years, but it is uh, a time uh, to move on, and I'm very thankful to, again, the TFNN family and Tom O'Brien and his uh, his great staff. So my show will continue uh, through this week, and it will continue Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, and that will be at 877-927-6648. Let's um, take our uh, first call of the day. Alan from uh, the great state of New York wants to talk lumber liquidators. How you doing, Alan? Hey, Ken. Hey, you. Before... So the rumor is true. You are you're actually leaving that show. Yes, I am. What am I going yes, to do I am. between three and four? What am I going to do? Uh, well, you know, well, listen. I like I said, Alan. It was. It's not an easy decision. Sometimes you got to make decisions in life that uh, that uh, you know are, are tough. And I'm going to miss. Uh, I'm going to miss everyone. But. Um, that's the that's the deal. I don't know what else to what else to say. It was not an easy not an easy decision. So you're going back to uh, IBD? Yeah, I'm going back uh, going back to uh, Investors Business Daily. An opportunity uh, came up over there for me that um, I think it's just the right uh, the right move for me to make. So uh, I am not uh, not galloping off into the sunset. You will uh, um, because I, I I followed you uh, back in the day when you were with IBD. And then when you and Kate Stalter left, actually the quality went downhill some 
encouraged that you're going back. I, I think that's great. Uh, are you going to do the radio show they have over there? Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no plans. I'm uh, joining the uh, editorial team. I'm going to be uh, joining the markets team, and I'll be doing some other things. But uh, going to be doing a lot of writing for the paper, and uh, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see how it uh, how it all plays out. But I start uh, April first over there, and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. And again, I think it's just the, the right thing at the right time for. So, for, so you're not going to uh, do that ultimate portfolio anymore. No, the newsletter is going to end. The newsletter is going to end. Um, my last, I uh, published uh, 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 update yesterday, and then uh, next Tuesday, March twenty sixth, will be my last uh, will be my last weekly update. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to see you go to the show, but I'm glad you're not leaving the scene because I'll pick you up at IBD. So let me move on. What do you think of our lumber liquidators? Strong, uh, super strong stock. You know, there's a lot of stocks out there that uh, continue to act uh, pretty well. A lot of uh, bears out there waiting for the market to, um, you know, to, to come in and uh, and uh, take a take a step lower here. But uh, lumber liquidators is. Um definitely strong it actually during its uh, recent uh during its recent rally there um there's been a little bit of volume uh be behind the move so you had a little uh, breakout over 65 48 um it's one of the better looking charts out there uh the thing that's kind of keeping me you know, a little cautious here, and not really aggressively looking to put new money to work here. It's just the, you know, the the distribution that we've started to see uh, in in the market. So, and okay, you know, we, lumber. We Liz, what do you think of the short interest? Because I know, uh, uh, like the, the beginning of February it was twenty three percent. Now it's going down to to eighteen percent. What? Why do you think there's such a large short interest in that stock? You know, it's it's hard to explain why stocks carry tend to carry you know high short interest. Uh, you're right; it, it is uh, short interest. Actually, in the latest month, was down about thirty three percent from uh, from the prior month. Uh, based on its average daily volume, short interest is still uh, relatively high in this name, but it has gone down uh, significantly. The thing about uh, lumber lumber liquidators is that you know you had you had the base breakout over. 60 bucks which was what was that that was basically back in uh january late january early february earlier this year and then it just came down to its 10-week moving average i would have much rather preferred buying lumber liquidators over 60. um you can pick a stock up on a bounce off the 10-week moving average uh but you know like i always explain that you want to just make it a, a smaller a smaller position so um you know it's a strong stock i'm not interested in interested in in buying it up here as is the case with a lot of these growth stocks i really would like to see some of these uh, names kind of form bases for five six seven weeks uh pull back you have to remember lumber liquidators too is it's just made a you know a massive massive price move um you know back you um, short short interest is, is bodes well for it moving a lot higher when people give up the ghost on that? Yeah, I mean that's uh, the stocks with high short interest. You know, when the shorts uh, cover, I mean the, the the fundamentals has have always been there for lumber liquidators. You know that they, they, they just have that good consistent track record of growth, and you know earnings this year and next are supposed to be pretty good too. It's supposed to grow earnings by twenty, twenty five, thirty percent over the next couple of years. So uh, if they continue to execute, you'd think that uh, short interest would um, would uh, continue to to fall here because again, relatively speaking, short interest is still high, even though it has been declining it's still on the uh, the high side so you know I, my general I, I, take I visited, I visited one of their stores and it's it's in like a low rent area or an industrial and it's neat and compact and uh, looks like really the overhead and, and in the new york area they say they're, they're open like three or four in all over there i mean it's uh seems like it's uh it's it it has it has a lot it has a lot of things uh, going for it you know ideally I'd love to see this one just come back down to its last breakout area right around sixty sixty one that would be the ideal ideal time to get in I think right now it's probably just a little bit late so you know we're going to get a little pullback at, at some point and I think with uh, lumber liquidators you know picking it up around sixty sixty one uh, would be better than you know sixty seven sixty eight where it is uh, where it is now but you know the stock has a lot going for it it's still under owned. You know, you hear about stocks being overowned by institutional investors. This one's still underowned. It does not have a lot of mutual fund sponsorship. And if it continues to execute, this is a, a perfect example of a stock where it's a pretty good bet. You're probably going to see more funds uh, eventually latch on to this company's growth story because at the end of 2012, there were only about 350 funds that had a position, which is not, not a lot, relatively speaking. 
All right. All right. Listen, uh, uh, thanks for the information, and uh, I'll follow up. Uh, we look forward to reading material on uh, in IBD, and uh, sorry you're leaving the show. I really enjoyed the radio show. All right, Al, really appreciate the support. Thanks for the kind words. Bye. Have a good day. All right, next up we're going to go to Beantown, talk to Joe, who wants to talk TJX. How are you doing, Joe? Ken, I'm doing well. You know, all good things must come to an end. This is true, my friend. This is true. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you have done a phenomenal job. You taught me a lot um, over the years. And I think that one of the biggest things that I've learned with you over the years is just like kind of the nuances and the more advanced things that you throw out there, um, especially with regards to when you're in an uptrend and you explain how sometimes it takes time for some leaders to set up. So you could be two, three, four weeks into an uptrend, but yet then you have some things breaking out and going after those and having the confidence to do it. Well, thank you very much. I think that's uh, you hit the nail right on the right on the head there. A lot of you know people sometimes think they they miss the boat and it's too late to to get in, but it's just a right. matter of you know paying attention to what's uh, to what's going on in the screens and right. you know I, I exactly. think you're exactly like, right. You know, the other day you were talking about the ascending base. Like those are for more advanced you know formations that you know a lot of people just don't know. They don't know about those, and they wouldn't know. And you've been, you know, you've gone through the IBD probably all through level. What is it, level four now? I mean, you've done it all. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, that, no, that exactly. Type of information is like invaluable. I uh, appreciate it. You know, so um, so, anyways, uh, that being said, you know, I was looking at this. Um, I, I was at the gym today, and I was talking to this guy, and he, and he happened to tell me he's like, yeah, I work at TJX in the warehouse in Woburn, and uh, you know. Um, how busy he is. So I, I went back and I was like, hey, let me take a look at this because I know it was a former leader and it had done well. So I'm like, now this thing looks like it's setting up nice. It is, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, relative spra- uh, relative strength wise. I mean, it, it's it's it is setting up in a base, but on a uh, weekly, I don't know if it you... looks it looks pretty good. On a weekly, it looks on a daily. It doesn't look bad either. It's been you know trending above its um, uh, you know 50 day moving average for a few weeks now. Found support at the. Uh, at the 200-day moving average in pretty pretty good volume uh, back in late uh, late February, so you've got a pretty pretty clear swing point here of 45 uh, 45 82. Right. Um, you had a nice uh, move yesterday in volume, kind of uh, extending gains today in uh, in lighter volume. You know, not my not my favorite name in the uh, the retail group, but you know, the, with with TJX, you know, first of all. Sales growth has been accelerating in recent quarters. That's a that's a good sign. Last time they reported earnings, their top line growth was up 15 percent. Prior three months, it's up 11 percent. Before that, nine percent. So you got you know sales growth accelerating. A lot of people shop here. TJ Maxx, uh, Marshalls, and right. what's their other their other brand is uh, Home. Uh, oh, good. Uh, Home Goods, yeah, is also owned by TJX, I believe. So, you know, this one, hey, it could try to break out over forty-five eighty-two. You get some volume; it's probably probably worth uh, a, a nibble. It's a nibble. Its price performance over the past twelve months uh, has been lagging the market a little bit, though. All right. All right, Ken. Thanks again. All right, Joe. Take care. All right, bye. All right, folks. Headed into break number one. Breakout investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Uh, just heard from Joe from uh, Boston and asking about TJX. Just wanted to finish up a, a couple thoughts about uh, TJX uh, companies. And in terms of retail leadership, I would not, you know, this is a stock where you can look look at the chart, and yeah, it's only about 2 to 3% off its high. It's uh, flirting with a breakout over a, a swing point of 45, uh, 45.82. Uh, which is uh, which is good, but this is a, a stock that is not yet under uh, meaningful accumulation. If it does take out that 4582 level in very heavy volume, yeah, you'd have a breakout on your hands. Uh, the fact that sales growth is accelerating in recent quarters is a good sign, but um, there are some charting services out there that show a relative strength line, which charts the basically compares the stock's price performance against the S&P 500, and uh, TJX has a relative strength line that has been uh, in a downtrend since September, October of, of last year. It has started to slightly turn higher, but typically when a stock is about to stage a technical breakout, you want to see that relative strength line either at near uh, near new high ground, at new high ground, or even leading the stock into new high ground, and that is nowhere near the case with TJX, so it is a, a flaw to uh, pay attention to. Next uh, call of the day, let's go to Mark, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Beautiful area. How you doing, Mark? Fine. Hey, uh, and I live here in Cheyenne, where we have a retail uh, clothing store, and it does a lot of tremendous business online calling service for stores. It was recently purchased by TJ Maxx, and it does. Uh, it, it's always had good growth, and I can't help but think that it's going to help TJ Maxx uh, a lot in the long run. 
Oh, that's interesting. I didn't. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of that uh, acquisition. Is it only is uh, is it the, the Sierra Trading Post only in Wyoming at this point, or are they in other areas? Well, I I see they might have one or two stores in other areas, but ninety percent of their business is done online. Oh, I see. It, it used to be a catalog, but now it's, I think it's all gone online, and uh, they. They've always had growth. They have a warehouse out here. I think it's about 700,000 square feet. They have a large store. And then we also have a TJ Maxx in Cheyenne. But I think in the long run, TJ Maxx is uh, it's going to benefit from that purchase. I think they, from what I heard, they paid uh, $200 million for that. Oh, wow. Okay, so a small acquisition, but something that they believe is uh, probably going to – they probably think they're going to be able to grow uh, grow the business, and it'll add bottom line for, for TJX. I, I think so, because a lot of people in the Rocky Mountain area are up in this uh, Cheyenne area where I-80 and Interstate 25 cross. They usually go there and shop. So. Well, very good. I appreciate that uh, that information, Mark. Okay, thank you. Okay, have a great day. Thank you. All right, yeah, I saw Sierra Trading Post pop up on my screen here. I said, uh, it doesn't look like a publicly traded company, but uh, Mark from Cheyenne, Wyoming, saying that uh, TJX uh, recently came in, and um, uh, Sierra Trading Post apparently online uh, does a lot of online selling and um, was bought by TJX. I haven't, uh, wasn't aware of that, but uh, appreciate that um, information. Let's uh, still have that uh, Fed press conference going on. Let's uh, go ahead and check in on the markets here, see what's uh, see what's going on here. Uh, the Dow off its highs up uh, 57 points to 14,512. NASDAQ uh, still outperforming. Basically, um, same percentage gain as the S&P 500 at this point. Uh, NASDAQ composite up 23 points to 32.52. S&P 500 up a uh, little more than 10 points, call it 7 tenths of a percent to 15.58. All right, April gold today lost $3.80, 2 tenths of a percent, settles at $1,607.50 an ounce. Uh, after the Fed statement came out, gold uh, continued lower. Um, let's go ahead and check in on the GLD here. Usually trades about one tenth the price of an ounce of uh, gold. Uh, right now, the GLD uh, trading at 155.59, down about three tenths of a percent on the day. Bond yields higher today. Ten-year note currently at 1.94 percent. Thirty-year bond 3.17 percent. April crude oil settles at 92.96 a barrel, up 80 cents on the session. Nine tenths of a percent gain there. And um, I'll tell you, looking at. Uh, one of these uh, oil refiners here, PBF, PBF Energy, had its IPO in December at uh, 26. Uh, really like the way this one is uh, trading. Some of the other refiners have been under quite a bit of selling pressure. PBF Energy, new uh, new issue, uh, behaving itself, looking uh, pretty darn good here, trading at forty dollars and ninety cents, up two and a quarter percent on the day. Um, you can see holding above its 50-day moving average, and uh, out of all the refiners, this one looks uh, this one looks the most interesting uh, at 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 the moment. Um, you know, big uh, big company, liquid stock, market cap of um, what is that three point three point nine billion, almost uh, four billion uh, market cap. So PBF Energy, P PBF, good one to watch in the refining space. We'll be right back, folks. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. 
WTFNN legend Bud Rolfs has come out of retirement to bring you a special report and a one-time only webinar that will show you what's going to happen in the markets over the next four years. Bud Rolfs is the former chief technical analyst of the Tiger Trading Post at TFNN and is a true market innovator who has taught thousands of students how to read charts and be more successful traders. Don't miss this chance to learn from a TFNN legend and get this timely market advice that will put you on the right side of the market for the next major move. Plus, he'll show you his expert analysis on the current major markets and explain the technical setup that is predicting a move of over 50%. We're offering this one-of-a-kind special package for only $179, and the moment that you sign up, you'll gain access to Bud's 11-page executive summary where he provides you with the keys to his market call and prepares you for his live 90-minute webinar on March 21st. Don't miss this one-of-a-kind offer. Sign up today on the front page of TFNN. Dot com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on uh, TFNN. Great day for the home builders. Got to talk about the home builders. Start by taking a look at the iShares U.S. Home Construction Index ETF. Good, solid move for the ETF, up 3% on the day to 24.73. Positive sentiment in the home building space, fueled by an outstanding earnings report from Lennar. Earnings at Lennar up 100% from a year ago to $0.16 cents a share. That was in line with expectations, but the sales growth was the real story here. Sales up 37% from a year ago to $990 million. That was about $100 million. Well, not quite $100 million, better than estimates. The estimate was for $898. Uh, Lennar comes in at $990. Yeah, well, that is almost about $100 million, isn't it? Uh, Lennar took a little over 4,000 new orders for homes in the quarter, up 34% from a year ago. Uh, backlog surged 82% to 4,922, 4,922 homes. Got a lot of movement uh, in the home building space today. Take a look at Pulte Group, up 2.9% to 2,142. A little double bottom breakout here for uh, Pulte Group recently over 20 and a half thereabouts, and Ryland Group, R-Y-L. 
Ryland Group, uh, same uh, sort of uh, technical setup here, outperforming nicely today, up 4.4% to 42.34. And let's take a look at DR Horton, DHI. This is a, a current long position in the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. Nice uh, day for this stock as well, up 4.7% to 25.44. So home builders continue uh, to uh, provide a nice pocket of leadership in the market. How about that move for Williams Sonoma today? Monster move for the retailer up 10 and a half percent today to 49.94. Beautiful base breakout today for uh, Williams Sonoma. Kind of funny, the quarter what didn't seem all that great. Uh, earnings up 15% to $1.34. That did beat the estimate by $0.05. Cents. Sales were in line, up 11% to $1.4 billion. Full-year guidance a little bit below expectations, but the company did increase its quarterly cash dividend to uh, by 41% to $0.31 cents a share. Also announced plans to buy back up to $700 million, $750 million worth of stock over the next three years. Now, I want to just look at a weekly chart for Williams-Sonoma, and this is just a, just a classic example of what a base breakout looks like. Here is the uh, start of the base here last year back in October or so, and then just a beautiful technical breakout in heavy volume. This is what a breakout from a base uh, looks like. Williams sonoma is doing it today. In IPO news, let's take a look. I don't have a chart here, but let's uh, check on ticker MODN. This is a company called Model N, as in Nancy. They provide revenue management software to uh, technology, life science uh, sectors. They raised a little over 100 million by offering 6.7 million shares at 1550. Demand pretty strong because the expected range was uh, 1250 to 1450. So it priced a buck above the expected range, and the stock is trading at 2029, up 31 percent on the day. So another strong first day pop for uh, an IPO. Model N, M O D N, on the NASDAQ. Other earnings uh, stories today. Let's take a look at Adobe Systems. Adobe is um, doing pretty well. It gapped up today. It's trading near its session low, still up a little more than 4% to 42.40. Earnings down 39% from a year ago to 35 cents a share. That beat views by 4 cents. Sales down 4% to just over $1 billion. That was a little bit better than expected. Investors do seem encouraged by the company's uh, cr uh, creative cloud. Um, subscriptions at, uh, at this business segment continue to accelerate. Adobe has more than 500,000 paid subscribers uh, to its creative cloud service and more than 2 million people on uh, trial subscriptions uh, as well. So. Creative Cloud includes um, Adobe's creative suite of digital imaging, web, video, print design tools, as well as uh, services for storing and sharing content online. So overall, pretty nice uh, earnings from Adobe Systems, and investors seem to be responding positively to the report. Let's take a look at uh, Francesca's uh, tweeted earlier today. This is a retailer that no one really knows about, and it really doesn't get a lot of uh, respect, even though the company really is executing... Uh, very well. And you look back in, in recent quarters and all you see is strong earnings and sales growth. Uh, all the conference calls sound uh, bullish and this was another strong quarter. Earnings up 74% from a year ago to 33 cents a share. The estimate was for 30 cents. Sales up 41% year on year to 86.7. That was uh, almost 2 million, uh, above, a little better than 2 million above the uh, consensus estimate. Uh, the company Women's uh, women's boutiques is basically what Francesca's uh, does. I haven't seen one out in California. I asked my wife if she had ever heard of it, and she said no. Um, but they do have about 350 stores right now, plans uh, to have 440 open by the end of the year. Long-term goal is to have 900 stores here. So you can still say that Francesca's is still in the early stages of growth. I'm just wondering when Wall Street is going to start discovering uh, this company's uh, growth trajectory. They offer a broad range of merchandise, uh, apparel, uh, to jewelry, accessories, gifts, and they do um, uh, cater to, I believe it's the 18 to 34 uh, female demographic. Uh, impressive performance for, for the market today, considering what FedEx uh, had to say. You know, the transports have been rocking, and when you look at 
FedEx's chart, it's hard to believe that the major averages are up as much as they are today because FedEx is just getting obliterated today, down 7% to 98 90 Six. Uh, this is the world's second largest package delivery company. Uh, FedEx, they missed estimates by a mile, dollar twenty-three a share, well below the consensus estimate of a dollar thirty-nine. Uh, sales were slightly better than expected, uh, up four percent to eleven billion. The estimate was for ten point eight five billion. CEO Fred Smith cited weakness in the global air freight business as well as uh, customers picking slower, less expensive ways to ship packages. So FedEx under quite a bit of uh, pressure today. Um, and General Mills, last check, having a, a pretty good day today. Beautiful move for General Mills today, up almost 3% to 47.75. Um, Cheerios, that's uh, that's a, a General Mills brand. Uh, earnings up 16% to 64 cents a share, 7 cents ahead of views. Sales up 8% to 4.4 billion in line. Uh, international sales did very well, up 24% to 1.3 billion, mostly due to its acquisition of Brazilian food maker Yoki Alimentos and YoPlay Canada. So nice uh, numbers from GS. Economic data on tap for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, weekly jobless claims expected to be up 13,000 to 345,000. We had uh, great housing data yesterday, strong earnings from Lennar today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get existing home sales for February, expected to be up close to 2% to 5 million units. And then the latest reading from the March Philadelphia Fed Index, it's expected to come in at minus 3 from a dismal rating of minus 12.5 in February. Let's take a look at some uh, stocks on the radar here. Again, this is a market environment where, you know, it's impossible to go short here. It's just, you, going, going short during a market uptrend, you're just exposing yourself to, to uh, additional risk. And, you know, I know it just depends on, on your strategy, but we're still in an uptrend that is showing, starting to show subtle sell signals, but the sell signals aren't prominent yet. So it's still a market that could uh, continue to confound the shorts. Um, seeing some yellow flags out there, but still seeing uh, plenty of decent uh, charts out here, including United Rentals. You can see firming up at its 50-day moving average for the past uh, month or so. It's actually about four and a half weeks into a flat base structure. So by the end of this week, you know, we definitely want to keep an eye on uh, this stock for a a technical uh, breakout. It is trading near its high, up 3.9% today to 55.49, uh, very close to a swing point of uh, 56. It's a company that provides construction, industrial equipment, rentals, so definitely one to uh, keep an eye on here. And then on assignment, ASGN. This was a profitable uh, pick for the Ultimate Growth Stocks Model Portfolio. Look at the move here. It um, it is uh, it is breaking out today. Kind of caught me off guard here because it is making a big move late in the session here, up 6.9% to 2565 on assignment. They are a provider of IT uh, staffing services. And let's just double check what the swing point here is. Looks like, well, you, it's basically a breakout over 25. So at 25.65, doesn't look to me like the train has left the station here. Volume looks uh, pretty decent in the stock. Uh, fundamentals, uh, pretty strong. They made an acquisition last year that is driving top-line growth in recent quarters when they last reported uh, earnings in uh, their fourth quarter earnings. Their revenues were up 148% from a year ago to just over $400 million. So nice technical breakout for on assignment today. Hospital operator. This is kind of uh, an example of good chart, kind of not so great fundamentals. Not bad, but not 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 great. HCA Holdings, hospital operator here, up 1% today to 38.64. Uh, many would say this is one of the better run uh, hospitals. Could, getting into position here for a possible breakout try over uh, 40. Um, stock is, um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad from a technical perspective, but again, sales growth decelerating in recent quarters from 12% to 11% to 9%. That's kind of going the wrong way. Uh, HCA does have a big following out there, though, and um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see this uh, this stock work going forward. Uh, that's a look at the daily chart for HCA Holdings.
Again, the more picky you are, you know, when you we talk about being picky, you want to see good charts, but you also want to see compelling fundamentals. Uh, with HCA, you know, you've got a good base taking shape here, good supporting action at the 10-week moving average. Um, but, you know, you look in 2013, annual earnings expected to fall to $3.18 a share from three seventy one. dollars um, That's a bit of a yellow flag. Earnings growth in 2014 expected to ramp that back up, rising 19% to 379, but decelerating sales growth in recent quarters. Um, you know, good chart, fundamentals, uh, leaving a little, little to be uh, desired here. Uh, same could be said, too, for MPEL. This is Melco... Uh, uh, a gaming a gaming firm here. Nice uh, breakout today for Melco MPEL. Stock is up close to 7% to 21.64. Nice little breakout today for the stock over uh, 21. So nice, uh, nice setup here. Again, kind of uh, an inconsistent track record of earnings and sales growth in recent quarters. That's a yellow flag. On the other hand, earnings growth this year and next, you know, 28% this year, 25% in 2014. Estimates uh, going higher. Uh, this one is uh, intriguing as well. So nice technical breakout for Melco PBL Entertainment. They have. Um, significant presence in Macau off of mainland China, just like Wynn and Las Vegas Sands. Let's check, take a look at Wynn. Last check, this one was having a little little bit of problems. Uh, well, I was going to say it was underneath its 50-day moving average for several uh, several weeks now, but it has uh, managed to uh, bust out above the 50-day line as it works on the right side of a base here. Wind Resorts up 2% today to 122.34. Uh, the better looking chart is Las Vegas Sands LVS. It is up 3.3% today to 54.48. Also working on the right side of a base here. So Got some, uh, got got a lot of action here. A lot of stocks uh, moving today. Uh, Home away. This is a name that we have not uh, talked about a whole lot, but love the chart action here. Home away trades under the ticker A W A Y. They operate an online uh, marketplace for uh, vacation rentals, and um, this is uh, a company actually where fundamentals are solid. Good growth prospects, good demand for the, the company's products and, and services, and I just love how the stock has been holding gains after hitting a high of 3125 earlier um, earlier this month on March uh, on March 5th. So you can see just tight sideways uh, trading here. If we look at a weekly chart for HomeAway, do that right now, and what we have here is a possible three weeks tight pattern taking shape. So we'll have to see. Three weeks tight forms after a stock moves up, breaks out, and then flashes a series of tight weekly closes, tight weekly closes where uh, a weekly close is within 1% of the prior week's close. Now it is moving late in the session today, so we'll see uh, by the end of this week if it, um, if it can close within what is it? One one percent of last week's close, which was thirty thirty three. Uh, there, you'd have a three weeks tight pattern in place, which could um, could signal higher prices ahead. Either way, this is one to watch. Uh, could see higher higher prices uh, going forward. So, Home Away, uh, operator of online operates an online marketplace for vacation rental rentals. Good fundamentals, good technicals, just what you want to see. All right, folks, headed into the final break. We'll be back in about three to four minutes. Put the finishing touches on today's program. Thanks very much for tuning in. As always, Ken Shreve with you on Breakout Investing TFNN. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com.
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Just recently on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Well, the Fed's statement press conference came and went without much uh, uh, fanfare. The Fed said that since its last meeting, um, information suggests a return to moderate economic growth following a pause late last year, uh, although the ba central bank does continue to see downside risks to the economic outlook, so they're sticking to their program of buying $40 billion a month of mortgage-backed securities and $45 billion of Treasury securities. Fed's going to wait for that unemployment rate to get down to 6.5% uh, before they even think about uh, nudging rates higher. Uh, another situation where they could nudge rates higher is if uh, their inflation target hits 2.5%. Uh, but uh, what we have is a market that is uh, trading near highs. You see, looking at the Dow here, up 60.5 points to 14,516. Nice little bounce off the 10-week moving average for the Dow. Taking a look at the NASDAQ composite, we'll see the uh, tech index also uh, having a decent day, up uh, close to 22 points, trading right in the middle of its range, but a nice tight trading range today after a bounce uh, yesterday off the 20-day moving average. Uh, NASDAQ Composite up uh, almost 22 points to 
3251 and finally the S&P 500 S&P 500, same uh, situation to the Dow. Gave up its 10-day moving average uh, yesterday, but it is back above the 10-day line, up close to 10 points to uh, 15.58. Uh, don't think I mentioned uh, volume yet today. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ tracking lower than what we saw yesterday. Volume Tuesday on the NASDAQ was 1.65 billion shares. We're tracking about 5 to 10% lighter than that uh, today. Volume yesterday on the New York Stock Exchange, 729 million. We're tracking about 15 to 20% lighter than that uh, today. So low volume rally. We know that the markets can rally in low volume. You know, when you look at the S&P 500, you see uh, here back in, in February, a lot of distribution in the index. Uh, in the, then it breaks out in fairly light volume. You're seeing more distribution up here, but yet it's rallying again. At some point, distribution days will matter. Higher volume declines are worth uh, paying attention to headed into uh, today. We've seen three higher volume declines for the S&P 500 and three for the NASDAQ as well. So once those higher volume declines, you get to five or six over a few weeks, um, time, that is a pretty good indication to start uh, protecting capital and uh, taking partial or full profits in uh, stocks in your uh, portfolio. So uh, yellow flags are out there. Uh, no red flags that I can see yet. Um, market holding up again pretty well today considering the uh, carnage in uh, FedEx. Uh, home builders kind of offsetting uh, the weakness in uh, FedEx and still seeing a lot of stocks out there uh, acting well. Like I said, uh, Valiant Pharmaceuticals, uh, ticker VRX. Nice move in that stock today up 2.6 percent to 73.28. We take a look at a weekly chart for Valiant and this is another example of a, a recent bounce off of the 10-week moving average. You had a nice little base on base uh, breakout uh, this year for Valiant, and then it comes down to its 10-week uh, moving average, find support. It's done well since finding support at the 10-week uh, uh, moving average. And, you know, another one, R-Y-A-A-Y, Ryan uh, Air. Again, news yesterday, they ordered a bunch of planes, a bunch of 737s from uh, uh, Boeing. Uh, Ryan Air, you can see the uh, breakout uh, right here earlier this year and then boom comes down to its 10-week moving average finds support and so far uh, this week up about uh, nine percent for the week trading around 4309 so uh, a lot of a uh, lot of good acting stocks out there after the close earnings reports from uh, Oracle uh, we'll hear what Oracle has to say after the close tomorrow morning we'll hear from KB home Lululemon and Ross stores coming up next the Tom O'Brien show have a great day folks see you tomorrow three o'clock Eastern have a great one let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.